Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a Cochrane test for means, not to be confused with the Cochrane Q test. Um, this video uh, is about how you can perform this test with Excel, not so much if you should use it. Um, for that you can have a look on my website. Um, there is even an article by Hartung and some others who claim that this test should actually never be used, but it does form the basis of some other tests. Now to show you how this can be done with Excel, unfortunately there is no simple function for it, so we have to follow the formulas and work it out ourselves. I have some example data in column A and I will leave a link to this file in the description uh, of the video. Um, and the scores, so the location is in column A and the scores are in column B. So that's my raw data, notice that there aren't any missing values. So the first thing I need are the number of categories. I just hard coded that. I just typed in three. And then we need the mean, basically the average, but the average for each category. That's shown in this uh, weird looking formula. Uh, but it basically can be done by using the average if function. So uh, I look in column A with the locations um, that should match whatever is in there. And then uh, I want the average of column B because those were the scores. Uh, I can then simply copy paste this down. By the way, if you have a different version of Excel, sometimes you need to use a comma as a separator for the parameters. I having a semicolon system. I can then just copy paste this down and those are my averages. Then we need to determine the for each score, so for 20, for 50, for 80, the square difference with its category mean. So this 20 was in uh, uh, corresponded with location 3 so I should subtract the 47 because that's the mean of category 3 and then square that result. Now this is actually done in column C as you can see um, and what it's doing is it's first checking if it's not empty so just in case of a missing value there and then it's exactly doing what it's shown earlier or discussed um, earlier. It takes the value and subtracts then the appropriate average find appropriate average it's doing a vertical lookup it's looking up the corresponding location so basically in this array so in that array it's looking up whatever is in here at the location so it's going to look up in the first column and it's going to find this three and then it's going to return the second column of this table so this is the first and that's the second so that's the average so that's exactly what it is we wanted. The last parameter zero is um, to look for a range lookup. We don't want that, we only want it to find an exact match. And then of course square the result and that should give us that squared difference. Um, you can just copy paste this down, double click on the autofill handle or just copy Control c Control v Alright, then we determine how many we actually have in each category. That can simply be done with a count if, column A, and then again the category. You can copy paste this down and that should give you the counts in each category. Then we also need the sample variance from each category. That's why we needed to calculate that column C, which is um, the sum of all of those that are in here but then for each category again and then divided by the number of items in that category minus one so that's what this formula is showing here so i can use a sum if and it's going to look in column a to match again only category one and then it's going to sum those c values or the ones that we calculate in column c and divide that then by the number of items in that category minus one. Again, I can now copy paste this down. Then we determine the weights and the weights are simply the sample size in the category divided by the variance. So that's going to be the sample size, which is over here, divided by the variance and we can copy paste that down. And then we also need to sum those results to get a so-called W value, the sum of the weights. We are now going to actually adjust these weights. So we're going to divide each of them by that total so that the new sum will become one. So that's being done here. I call these H values. So I take the, weighted, uh, the weight and divide it by the total of weights. 
I'm using dollar sign so that when I copy paste it down uh, this cell reference doesn't change because it needs to be always that total so now if I copy paste this down it nicely also for the last one uses the total this is just a small check to see if it now indeed sums up to one we can now calculate the overall weighted mean by simply uh, uh, multiplying these h values with the corresponding original averages which were all the way on top over here now excel has a sum product function that actually does that for us so we want to multiply these values with indeed these averages and that gives us our overall weighted mean of 63 point something now we need to determine the chi-square statistics that looks um, a little bit scary over here but we actually have all these values it's the weight the unadjusted one multiplied by the average of the category minus that overall weighted mean squared so that's exactly what's being done here it's the weight which is over here then multiplied by the difference of the average which was all the way on top over here minus and then the weighted mean so that's here again I'm using for this one I'm using a dollar sign so that if I copy paste it down it doesn't change and then square that result so I do that for all three all my three categories and then I can finally sum this up so this will be our chi-square statistics as you might notice here on the left I actually made my own small user-defined function that can calculate it for me um, and then the degrees of freedom that's very simple it's the number of categories minus one so if we go all the way up we had our number of categories which was three so minus one should give me two then the uh, the p-value or the significance um, luckily Excel has a chi-square distribution we want the right tail and we can simply put our chi-square value in there and then uh, the degrees of freedom and in this case it will tell us it's um, a zero point and then five zeros to eight seven now the usual threshold is 0.05 so this one is far below that because it's 0.0002 something uh, which indicates then that the averages are not all the same in the population and that's how you can calculate a Cochrane test for means using Microsoft Excel hope this was helpful and thank you for watching